whether an organization purchases, leases, or develops its HRIS, the data and the information it produces are stored and retrieved through a database. Today's HRIS has as their foundation electronic databases that work in conjunction with business applications to transform data into information that is essential for business operations and for decision making. Data are the lifeblood of an organization. The production and maintenance of data are critical to the smooth operation of every part of the organization. Data represents the facts of transactions that occur on a daily basis. A transaction can be thought of as an event of a consequence, such as hiring a new employee for a particular position for a specified salary. The organization attempts to capture the data, the facts, associated with each of these transactions, such as the date hired, the name of the person hired, and the title of the person hired, or the location where the new hire will work, and so on, and then store these data for future use. Information, on the other hand, is the interpretation of that data. An interpretation of data always has some sort of goal or context, such as making a hiring decision for a particular department or understanding the performance of an employee to make a promotion decision. Note that sometimes the data themselves can be informative without any additional transformation. For example, the salary range of a job. But other times, we must do additional work for example, calculating totals or presenting the data in some order to turn that data into information to answer important questions such as, what is our full-time headcount in corporate sales? Or, which employee should be promoted? Knowledge is information that has been given meaning. Knowledge is different from data and information. More than what and why, knowledge is about how. Knowledge, therefore, consists of the procedures one follows to use data and information to make decisions and to conduct business. In many instances, such procedural knowledge is mostly hidden, residing in the minds of individuals and groups in the organization. For example, in HRIS, facts about age, gender, and education are the data. Information created from this data includes average age, gender ratio, and number and types of graduates at the business unit level. Such data and information help HR managers plan, recruit, schedule, and train different employees in different ways. Knowledge represents how HR managers can execute the recruitment plan, decide which training programs to best bridge skill gaps, or to determine what to do if an employee discrimination exists. In the HR function, data about employees and jobs are the foundation of most of the information that is critical to analyzing and making HR decisions. Knowledge, on the other hand, constitutes knowing what information is needed from a database and how to use it to achieve HR objectives. A DBMS, or a database management system, is a set of software applications, like computer programs, combined with a database. A DBMS electronically allows organizations to effectively manage data. Managing data means, first, identifying the data needed to create information that is necessary to make HR decisions. Second, defining the characteristics of that data, for example, number data versus character data. And then third, organizing that data in a manner that promotes integration, data quality and accessibility, and restricting access to that data to the right individuals. By performing these functions effectively, a DBMS turns data into an organizational resource. So here's a visual of what we just talked about, a DBMS. The main functions of a DBMRS are to create the database, insert, read, update, and delete database data, maintain data integrity, as an example, making sure the data is correct, and security, as an example, making sure only the right people have access to the data, and finally, to prevent the data from being lost by providing backup and recovery capabilities. DBMSs and databases work in conjunction with business applications, such as the Transaction Processing Systems, or TPS, to make organizations run smoothly. As shown in this figure, these business applications consist of a set of one or more computer programs that serve as an intermediary between the user and the DBMS, 
while providing the functions or tasks that the user wants performed. For example, store the data about a new hire. The business application must talk both to the user sitting at a computer terminal and in an e easy user-friendly manner and to the database in a way that is very efficient. For example, a payroll process application involves collecting data from an employee's time card, storing that data in a database, and then retrieving it and manipulating the data to produce a paycheck. Data from this transaction processing system can also be used to generate reports on monthly personnel expenses. Rather than programming relationships between data based on a physical location, information needed to integrate data should reside within the data. Data can be stored in tables where each table represents one entity in the real world and the information associated with that entity be stored only in that table. For example, a company could have an employee table. As an example, here the employee is an entity. So, the information about the employee, such as name, address, date of hire, would only be stored in that table and nowhere else in the database. Such an idea removed problems with redundancies such as storing employees' addresses in many locations and then not knowing which one was correct, if the employee's address changed in one location and not the other. These tables were called relations, and from this model came the relational database model. Entities are things such as employees, jobs, promotion transactions, positions in the company, and so on. They include both physical things, such as desks, and conceptual things, such as bank accounts. A company must analyze its business operations and identify all of the entities that it believes are important. Each of these entities is made up of attributes. An attribute is a characteristic of an entity. For example, an employee has a name, an address, a phone number, education, and so on. Attributes also have characteristics such as the type of data, as an example, the a date, a number, or a character, and the size, as an example, the number of characters or the largest number that can be stored. Attributes are stored in a field of a table. Think of fields like an Excel spreadsheet cell. To represent the relationships among tables, we have to do a little bit more work. In a relational DBMS, relationships are created by having the same attribute in each table, with the value of the attribute being the same in each table. Most often this is done by taking the primary key of one table and including it in the related table. What is the primary key? Typically, each entity has an attribute that has unique values for each instance of the entity. For example, each employee has a social security number that is unique, i.e. only one person has that particular number. Other entities, such as jobs, locations, and positions can be assigned a unique number if one doesn't exist. These unique attributes can be used as a table's primary key. Given that we have the unique attribute to create the relationship, we simply store the attribute in the related table. So if an employee is associated with a position, we have two tables, the employee table and the positions table. Then we take the primary key of the employee table and store it in the position table to make the relationship. So let's take a look at what we just talked about represented visually. How does information fit into a relational DBMS? Remember, tables are used to store information about entities. As illustrated here, one table is created for each entity. In this example, the driver table, car table, moving violation table, and the parking violation table. Attributes are stored as columns, also called fields, in the table. As noted earlier, attributes represent a single data element or characteristic of the data table. For example, a table of driver data would have the following columns or characteristics. First name, last name, street address, city, state, driver's license number, expiration, and so on. Each of these characteristics represents an attribute or field of the table. Each table in a database contains rows. Rows are also referred to as records and represent an instance of an entity. 
For example, in the driver's license table, each row contains data about a particular driver, and each column contains data that represents an attribute of that driver, such as name, phone number, and license number.